welcome. My name is Nikos Lopez. I'm with the company called Econis and I will show you how easy it is to connect the new nuclear boards to Wi-Fi through the Econis EC19D Wi-Fi dotted board and this will take just 20 minutes for someone to do it. Just fast who is Econis. Econis is a leading manufacturer of Wi-Fi modules under the family name of Wi-Smart. Wi-Smart modules are for the IoT and M2M communication applications. They are designed for high performance, low power consumption, and meeting uh, TCPIP star WPA engine Wi-Fi management. They are cloud connectivity ready and FCC, C, IC, and Telex certified. An outline of the two series of the module L is the EC32L. The EC32L module is a digital solution based on powerful STM, MCUs, and front end Wi Fi's. They are 802.11 BGN 2.4 GHz. They are cloud connectivity ready, very low power for standby 2.3 to 3 microns. Up to 22 megabits of performance on TCP and UDP. Very high performance for these plastic devices. TCP and UDP sockets, all kind of security and support up to SSL and HTTPS. Easy to integration on software and hardware level. Very low cost, fully certified modules, application ready with pre, pre uh, defined and pre prepared applications and reference designed by Econis. And they are open architecture modules. This means you can put your own code into the MCU, the SDM MCU of the module, and use it as a development platform. The EC19D is a new generation, third generation of the modules. They are single chip, 802.11 BGM 2.4 GHz. They have a proprietary 32 bit CPU in the module. They have cloud connectivity, 10 microns to standby. They can achieve 12 to 13 megabits of performance. And they have Wi Fi direct uh, capabilities and the ProBMI. Uh, but in the mass configuration method of Econis. This method allows to configure uh, massively a large amount of devices without connecting to each one. Now, how we connect nuclear to Wi-Fi? What we need? We need the nuclear, of course. We need the daughter board of the decay of, of Econis, this thing here. And we need the Wi-Fi network. That's all we need to connect it. How? We plug it in and we can communicate through UART, through SPI, and today we're going to use UART mode. So, since we plug it in, we're ready to go. These are the blocks that we are going to, to deal with. The red one is what you are making, it's your application. All the rest is made by Econis and SD. Take it to Wi-Fi connectivity, you need just five simple steps. One is to initialize the communication between nuclear board and Econis Dotter. Second is to initialize any hardware interfaces you need for the nuclear board for monitoring and getting debug messages. Third one is to create callbacks for the Wi-Fi connectivity. The library we provide works with callbacks. This means it is not blocking your code. When something happens on the Wi-Fi level, the callback function will be called by the library and give you the data and the information you need to process and take action. Fourth thing to do is to initialize anything else on hardware that you need, but uh, requires to be uh, first finished the, the connectivity, the initialization of the Wi-Fi. And finally, in a simple state machine, you just add your piece of code which says, okay, what do I do with the data I have? So it's very simple code and as you will see, it is very easy to do it. So first step, we don't care about the embed library this time, we need to initialize the EC19D to nuclear communication. So your application with just one code will initialize all that. The code 
will look like this. Just one function call in the eCorners library will initialize the library, the eCorners daughter board, and the communication of hardware level 2 to nuclear port. Second step, we need to initialize the nuclear part. So your application will just call the initialization for that. In our example, we initialize at this stage the USB to serial interface so we get some debug messages and see what's happening with our program there. Very simple to do it. We have a function here that does it. So this function can be big, but practically there's only one line. I just need to, I just need to set the baud rate that I would like to have in this code. All the rest is being taken care of by the embed library from SD. And it is C++ code, so you just define an object, and the moment it is initialized, everything is in place, and you just change the parameters you need to change. Third part, the callbox. Okay, this sounds a little bit complicated, but it is not. It is very easy. So, we need from the application to tell to the library, the corners library, which functions we want to call for events like connection, like getting ID, like uh, getting data or sending data. We have a callback initialization function, and in this, we just make it calls in the library and we say, if there is a connection event, the library in my code I want to call is the Wi-Fi connected platform callback. So with this callback, we have TGP for IP and for sockets. This is how callback works. We just have it flags. No need to do anything. The library does all the work. And I just need to have some flags for my state machine and for my logic. So I will not try to send data in a, at a non-connected source. So I just need to, to monitor what is happening and what is the state. This is for the DHCP. Just to know, okay, DHCP is there, so I expect to get IP. Getting the IP is passed through the callback. If I don't need to do anything, I don't do anything. Just mark that IP is assigned, so it's okay for me to start sorting. This is a socket callback. In this socket callback, the library will tell you, okay, I have an ID, X is connection, and I have data of that data length. So you can be prepared for DMA if you like. If you don't like DMA, then you just use the data received callback and it will be passed by reference. So far, it's nothing difficult in here. At this point, you already done maybe 40 percent, 50 percent of the work, and you just need to start putting it together to work. So, what is left? The beginner said maybe we need to have some buttons or some hardware to be initialized after we have set up the Wi-Fi. Like a button, when I click it, will send some data. So this is the second stage of the hardware initialization. So practically, if you think it, it's not even five stages, it's four. I'm just doing the hardware initialization in two steps. The data is Yes, the data, the data comes in through the callback. So when there is data coming in, the library, the e-commerce library, will call the callback and pass you the data. So you don't even need to know how this data was processed so far, how it is connected. So in this case, I'm just having an initialization of a button. So when someone is pressing a button, it will call a function, do something, and that's all. To do that, one line of code, of course, because embed already done the job for us, so we make it a button object, and we say, okay, when this object is on rise, call this function, and we will do whatever we want to do in that. There is, uh, it is not an operating system. We program it exactly directly on this uh, on, on the board. There is the embed library that does the big work. In, in our library, there is no. It is 
Don't just an additional library, it is not an operating system. It is object oriented C++, so you don't have uh, any libraries, any uh, operating system. So, we have all the blocks done. The only thing we need to do now is to have a state machine that will roll and read the data from Wi-Fi and from hardware all the time. How we do it? In the main, you just make an endless loop that will serve your state machine and the events from the library. Events from the library, you don't care to do anything. It's a call to the library. The library will do the job and call back the callback functions that you have declared to give you the data and the indications that you need. This is how the state machine looks. It's pretty simple. Just flags to go to the next stage and to connect it is only one function call. I want this device to connect to this network. How it's going to do, if it needs uh, scanning or not, uh, find what is the WPA or web or whatever is there, the library will do that for you. You just need to say connect to this network. Other than that, as you see, we're just keeping flags to move to the next stage until we are at the position to have the transaction with data. When we are connected with IP, means DHCP callback happens, we have DHCP or we have assigned static IP in some cases, and then we got the IP and we can have uh, sockets. And in this case, we just start in a listening socket at a predefined point. Only one call in the Connors library, and you have a listening socket. The socket has an ID, and we will refer to that by an ID, so you don't need to have big parsing on IPs and, uh, and ports uh, objects. Everything else still, still is uh, just flags, and the wait state, actually we call it wait, is where your code goes. In my example, there is just a simple code that checks if I press the blue button, so it will send something to Zively Cloud Server or not. This is the whole big function of this code. This is the send. In this case, in this application, if a remote socket sends us data, we just add nuclear receive and send it back to the receiver. To send data, one call. I don't know how much simpler it can be. Everything can be done by one call at every stage. Either it is nuclear library or it is a commerce library. So at this stage, we have done the hardware initialization with just two or three function calls, maybe three or four lines of total code. We have done the network initialization, just one code, one line of code at the beginning. We have done the callbacks so we can get events and process them from the Wi-Fi. And we have may already created the state machine that will process the events that happens, like if there is a disconnection event from the Wi-Fi the callback we set the flags on the state machine will jump to try to reconnect. Everything that everything is finished, the device can read and write from hardware, it can send and receive data from the network, a few simple lines of code. And this thanks to the Nucleus SD library and the Corners library, which is practically making everything very easy and hides all the complexity behind it. With, with embed library, uh, configuring a hardware port is, pro, uh, port is just defining an object of the class of the port. Nothing more. For starting a connection in Wi-Fi, it is just calling one function. Sending data, one function. Receiving data, one function. You just have to deal with the data there. The only thing left for your application is what should I do with my data? And then this is the wisdom that you need to create in this project. What do you find a software? This code, the code I just saw, is it just an example that we have here? 
Uh, we can, you can see the demo in our real booth at Iconos. Uh, Iconos. Yeah, but uh, as we can understand, there, are, there will be a lot of examples available on the web for all this and documentation for the API. So it is very easy for anyone just to select the right function for the right operation. These boards, these boards will be available through the SD channels. Uh, it's not, this is actually the first prototype I have here. It's going to be in a couple of weeks available through SD channels. Probably maybe through DigiKit, -Digi but SD channels will be the, the main source to get it. The same way you get it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have any cost for this. That's the idea. That's the idea. That's the idea, but uh, uh, Wi-Fi we support WPA, WPA2, PSK, uh, Enterprise, TLS, TTLS, BIP, certificates, username and password, and on top of that we support HTTPS and SSL. So, good luck to someone who wants to break Enterprise WPA2. <laughs> that you want lower level, that you want to bypass all these libraries and try to do it lower level, yes then you can do it, but you will not have all the uh, easy easy parts of the, of the libraries. Yes, you can use the AT command interface for directly for our uh, board, uh, and you can write low level, uh, low level code for the STM CPU. You can do it in a traditional way, it's not something that blocks you, but everything that is done by the two companies and gives you this API will be done again by you. So, iPhone to control this port, how do you use this? Huh? What is an iPhone to control this port, how do you use this? Okay, yeah, then you, uh, you can have the iPhone connected to the same network as this port, and you will have sockets between the application on the iPhone and the application on this one. Or you can use a cloud service. So your iPhone can talk to the cloud service, this can talk to the cloud service, and they can exchange commands and data through the cloud totally transparent. Because we have Wi-Fi, right? They can communicate. Depends, depends how you want it. If it is just direct connection on the same Wi-Fi network, and they exist on the same Wi-Fi network, yes, you can do it. You can have it as an access point, or as a client on the same router, they will communicate. But if you go to the cloud, then you have an abstraction layer that does not limit you on the same Wi-Fi network. You, you will have to create that for application yourself. Uh, you, can, you can ask this to provide that. Uh, just make sure you, you don't miss the next one, it's a very interesting uh, session. And whoever wants to see the screen running, uh, you can just drop by at uh, our booth. In 10 or 15 minutes I will set it up. Uh, booth? 634. 634. 634. Down the alley at the left. Any other questions? Thank you very much.